This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. This is the story of an ancient nation on its quest for modernization. How far has China come? My mother, back then, in the Longyang Valley, carried it, carried Huang Zhong. To the eleventh time, he drove a car to the capital city. 天安门，谢礼。我们这里都没想到，就国家能有这个政策能发展到今天。Does China have a unique approach to modernization? 超越计算机作为国之重器，能够使得我们国家更快的实现现代化。花园天花带动了我家经济条件，也解决了很多妇女的就业问题。而海水做清了，大米买了。And how does the modernization of 1.4 billion people impact the world? Chinese contribution is not limited to what needs to be done within China. The most important thing in the development is the people. This will be written about by historians in the centuries to come. China is a country that has such a beautiful and great history. China is very big and has a lot of technology. The first thing that comes to my mind uh, when I hear the name China, infrastructure, technology is, is another thing. Shanghai loved it. China is a country that was very early. We are really culturally aware of what's going on in the world. How modern? Do you think China is? China is very modern. Maybe not as modern as some other countries. I haven't been there myself, but I hear that's pretty modern. Modern? I, I think they're relatively modern. Some part of China is like pretty underdeveloped, and some parts are well developed and well kept. The sun has just risen, and Jiang Xin is already hard at work. The 33-year-old is an experienced construction worker from central China's Henan province. I was from 15 years old to now. It's been about seven years. Seven years, I've been working on high-altitude construction sites. Hello, hello. And the veteran roofer is keen on passing his knowledge and experience on to the next generation of builders. As with all construction jobs, safety first. The project they're working on is Xiamen's new international convention and exhibition center. It is one of the biggest ongoing projects in the coastal city, and a fitting symbol of China's rapid urbanization. Covering an area of nearly 300,000 square meters, the exhibition center is scheduled for completion in two years. A feat of time management made possible by an improving technology. 自己从业这几年里面，我来看的话，呃，首先是我们整个项目，就是整个，呃，我作为这种项目一线人员，我们整个现场管理是在走向现代化了。从第二方面，就是我们所谓这个建筑体系的这个现代化，这些从结构形式方面的变化呢，包括现在一直在走的这个装备式，也是体现了项目的一个，呃，那个现代化。Junction says building a project is like raising a child. Being able to witness the growth of these iron babies brings him a sense of pride and joy. Zhang is one of the hundreds of millions of migrant workers in China, the backbone of the country's urbanization and modernization drive in the past decades.
to have a society that was so poor to be transformed in the course of 70 years into a country that is extraordinarily modern now is uh, uh, really a most amazing achievement and uh, you know this will be written about by historians uh, in, the in the centuries to come. China's urbanization drive, as impressive as it has been, offers only a glimpse into the country's brand towards modernity. He Tranqi is a leading researcher on China's modernization and has devoted nearly three decades to the subject. The report shows that in 2018, China either met or surpassed the performance in a range of key indicators by developed countries in 1960, the benchmark for completing the first phase of modernization. Remarkable progress has been locked in areas including economic structure, health care, literacy, higher education, infant mortality rate, and life expectancy. But China's modernization drive hasn't been without problems. Imbalanced development is one example. In Jiangxin's hometown, Guangxian County, in a rural part of Henan province, where one of the largest sources of income comes from growing tea. The average annual disposable income for residents stands at 20,000 yuan, or just under $3,000. And in his home province, Henan, 350,000 people were lifted from absolute poverty only three years ago. The country is now on a quest for basic socialist modernization by 2035. So for China, the journey to modernization continues. At first automobile works, Hongqi, or red flag high-end sedans, are rolling off the production line. Both the sedan and the factory are the pride and symbol of China's early industrial endeavors. Founded in 1953 in Changchun, capital of northeast China's Julian province. First Automobile Works, or FAW, was part of the first five-year plan, which set ambitious goals for industries and areas of production deemed priority by the country. 92-year-old Lu Jingtran is the company's former chief designer. It was under these harsh conditions that the pioneers laid the foundation for China's industrial modernization. A foundation that had to be built almost from scratch when the country couldn't even produce the simplest of machines. To produce China's first automobile, more than 2,000 parts had to be made by hand. For the past uh, 100, 200 years, China was largely falling behind. There's, there's many more reasons. There's, uh, there's a feudalist society, 
there is a, a imperial uh, invasion. China was a was a war zone uh, as a major front of the Second World War, and uh, uh, so all those factors contributed the uh, the backwardness. The first industrial revolution, centered largely in England, was based on steam engines, which for the first time dramatically increased the capacity to do work. The second industrial revolution focused on mass production manufacturing, along with the electricity that powered it. At the time, China was an imperial dynasty that excluded itself from the world and thus missed both the first and second industrial revolutions entirely. Making China's first vehicle a heavy-duty truck was a huge milestone, but FAW's aspirations didn't stop there. Their next big project. Creating the country's own high-end passenger car. FAW story was just one of the many challenges and triumphs during the first five-year plan period. From 1953 to 1957, China also established its first heavy steel rolling mill, aircraft manufacturer, and a machine tool factory. All helped to lay the solid foundation for industrial modernization. And now the the task of the newly founded government is to first of all restore all those damaged and.、Uh, Uh, or, or destroyed during the,、uh, those wars, but the second is to build new infrastructure project, carry out the land reform, you know, also、uh, greatly、uh, map out a plan for China、uh, to get into a more,、uh, uh, you know, stable and but also quick development. The factory floor of today's FAW. Filled with AI-controlled industrial robots and unmanned vehicles, looks unrecognizable from its early years. In the meantime, China has risen to become the world's largest manufacturer of vehicles, producing over 26 million cars in 2021, more than a quarter of the world's total production. Perhaps a fitting metaphor for China now and in history. Chinese people have been so eager to build and enjoy modernization ever since China was under invasion, exploitation, and suppression by the imperialist powers in the second half of 19th century and the first half of 20th century. And also, the sharp contrast between the West imperialist powers and China in terms of economic growth and social development left a strong impression to Chinese people. Therefore, they really wanted to rejuvenize and re-strengthen the Chinese civilization and nation. In 1954, five years after the founding of New China, the central government for the first time proposed a goal of achieving modernization in industry, agriculture, transportation, and national defense to meet the Chinese people's aspirations for modernization. The person portrayed on this one yuan note is Liang Jun. Born in a time of war, she fled from a marriage forced upon her at the age of 12, and became China's first licensed female tractor driver. Her story is that of both China's agricultural modernization and individual liberation. Dongwanhong Lun is a tractor of 28 miles. 这款拖拉机当时是我母亲驾驶过的啊，拖拉机。Liang's son Wang Yanbing remembers how his mother signed up for tractor driver training, despite pressure from public opinion. 那个时候呢，就是在北安要成立拖拉机这个培训班，当时分给萌芽学校，有这个三个名额。后来我妈妈就看到了，我妈说：“男人能干的事情，我也要干。” For millennia, China had been a patriarchal society where women had no social status and were considered subordinate to their male family members. 
for a woman to hold a job was unthinkable, let alone being a tractor driver. But Liang Jun broke stereotypes and became an active participant in the country's drive for agricultural modernization. Liang Jun's story is just one of the countless more of ordinary Chinese who were able to rise above their circumstances because of the country's modernization drive. The challenge uh, after 49 was to stabilize the country and begin to create the possibilities for an industrial and uh, agrarian uh, transformation and to you know, reunify China um, and to establish a governmental structure uh, that was going to be effective. And I think all of these things were fundamental building blocks of China's achievements uh, in the following years. And of course, health, education, all the things that most Chinese had not really experienced were, began to be built up in this period. China's industry grew from 21% to 48% of GDP between 1952 and 1978, building a relatively independent and complete industrial system. Agriculture has also modernized rapidly, with higher levels of mechanization. After the founding of the People's Republic, China truly began to embark on a journey to modernization. Eighty-year-old Guan Youjiang isn't just an avid Douyin scroller. He also live streams to customers to cross China from Xiaogang village in East China's Anhui province, selling local produce using the popular social media platform. The senior farmer in rural China is an internet influencer trying to earn a place among millions of his much younger peers. In fact, Guan has already earned a place in modern Chinese history. He was one of the 18 farmers in Xiaogang village who pioneered China's rural reforms when he was young. One and 17 other farmers left their fingerprints on a secret pack in 1978 that changed history. They split the collective land into individual plots and allocated the plot to each of them with a sole aim of increasing production and avoiding starvation. This obviously defied the policies of the then people's commune system, under which everything was owned by the commune and every decision was made by the commune. It was a choice between losing everything, even their lives, or starving. The secret deal led to a huge increase in harvest in Xiaogang village. It caught the eye of nearby villages and later the central government. The Xiaogang model called Household Contract Responsibility System was soon replicated across the nation and ushered in China's rural reform. Zhou Chunzhi is the party secretary of Xiaogang village. Born in the 1970s, he witnesses village's transition from poverty to prosperity. I think the 
，呃，包括在推进美丽乡村建设，呃，社会治理、产业发展。Villagers now enjoyed a hundredfold increase in their annual income, and welcome an increasing number of tourists who want to learn about their history. Xiaogang Village was once a pioneer of China's reform and opening up. Now it is a showcase of the country's rural modernization. The boat move of Guan Yuzhang and his fellow villagers 45 years ago was the prelude of an unprecedented nationwide reform and opening up, declared at a third plenary session of the 11th Party Congress in December 1978. The sweeping and comprehensive campaign involved the emancipation of the mine, reforms in all sectors, setting up of special economic zones. And opening up to the outside world, it says a lot about the Chinese Communist Party, because it made a big change. It made a big shift in its approach, and there's very few、uh, political parties that ever do anything like that. It needs great confidence, and it needs great roots, and it needs great leadership. As a result, the lives of hundreds of millions of Chinese people. Have been transformed. Hu Xiaoxue is one of them. The pianist, born in 1972 to a musical family, started playing at three. 应该是八四年吧。嗯，中国出台了就是，呃，这个关于自费留学的一些。政策哈，嗯、呃，那么从那之后开始呢，就逐渐的开始出现就是这个自费留学的这些学生，所以在那个时候呢，我周围的人，呃，不管是同学还是比我年长一些的，呃，搞西洋专业的这些人，呃，我的印象当中，他们有很多人就开始学英文，呃，并且开始往外这个出去留学。Hu Xiaoxue jumped on the bad wagon of China studying abroad craze and left for the U.S. to study piano in 1997, and later made a comfortable living there with her husband. In 2002, the China Conservatory of Music invited her to help build its piano department. She faced a tough decision. I think this is a very big opportunity. 所以潜意识里觉得应该回国试一试。在美国的生活固然是非常优越，而且很稳定，但是我觉得就会一眼望到头了。已经看到了退休的日子，每一天就是那样按部就班。对于一个年轻人来讲，我觉得这样的日子过于平稳了一点。但是中国是充满了机会、充满了未知的这么一个，所以我非常想回国试一试。Hu Xiaoxue's decision turned out to be a rewarding one. She is now responsible for nurturing the next generation of music talents in China. As China opened up to the outside world, the country began to interact with the world on a scale and depth never seen before. So agrees. Meanwhile, China's modernization drive has benefited tremendously from its interactions with the world, as has the global community from China's development and engagement. As the world gets more complex, and we need to learn how to work together, and that's the baseline of multilateralism. So China understand that.、Uh, By itself, cannot solve many problems. It needs international collaboration. It needs international cooperation. It needs to teach and to learn with other civilization. And that's, I think, it's important. It's an important lesson for the world. China has modernized rapidly since 1978, increasing its global GDP share from below 2% to 18.5%. And its urban population from under 18 percent to 65 percent. In 2021, China officially announced a total eradication of absolute poverty, lifting nearly 800 million people out of poverty 
over the past few decades. This is the story of an ancient nation on its quest for modernization. How far has China come? My mother, in the Longyang Valley, was driving his car, driving his car. When she got to the sixth floor, she was driving a car to Beijing. 天安门，谢礼。我们这里都没想到，就国家能有这个政策能发展到今天。Does China have a unique approach to modernization? 超越计算机作为国之重器，能够使得我们国家更快的实现现代化。花园天花带动了我家经济条件，也解决了很多妇女的就业问题。而海水做清了，大米买了。And how does the modernization of 1.4 billion people impact the world? Chinese contribution is not limited to what needs to be done within China. The most important thing in the development is the people. This will be written about by historians in the centuries to come. Lying on the river delta of East China's Zhejiang Province, Taizhou has been known historically for its abundance of fish and rice. Now, the port city with a population of six million is renowned for its vibrant private sector and enterprises, which account for nearly 80 percent of the city's GDP. 公司的业务的话，最主要是我们做的是工业缝纫机、缝纫机、服装、鞋帽、企业的装备。Jack Sewing Machine has been a dominant player in China's industrial sewing machine sector for more than a decade. And in 2018, it overtook its Japanese competitor to lead in global sales. It's a far cry from when the founders, three brothers, started their small-time shoe mending operation nearly three decades ago. We were in 1995. There were only three of us. We made a small shoe mending factory. At that time, we didn't have a lot of money. We just called our farmers together and went to work together. We were all young. Ron had big aspirations, but no one thought they could ever come true. Back when they started the business, most sewing equipment in China was still operated manually. There was no way to compete effectively against increasingly autonomous and efficient sewing machines used in Western industrialized countries. Recognizing that lack of technology was the stumbling block, the ambitious entrepreneur. Set his sights overseas. In 2008, Jack acquired a leading cutting machine manufacturer from Germany. A decade later, it bought two more Italian sewing companies with an eye on developing smart manufacturing. The company has also put tens of millions of dollars into products innovation every year. With a research and development team of more than a thousand staff from home and abroad, from importing technology to training talent and indigenous innovation, Jack leaves no stone unturned when it comes to intelligent solutions. We test this tie. Yes. I was in 2017. 去了意大利的呃麦卡公司去学习，这是我们收公司收购的一家子公司。到了意大利学习期间呢，我们学我学到了很多的关于这个呃智能制造
，在仿制设备如何更好的结合的，那点点滴滴。回来公司以后，我们的把这些技术带到我们的传统的这个仿制设备方面。The company now boasts more than 2,000 patents, a testament to its ability to learn, adapt, and innovate. China ranked 11th in a global innovation index in 2022. According to a report by the World Intellectual Property Organization, China stands out for producing innovations that are comparable to those of a high-income group. Well, I think that there is a, a considerable prejudice、uh, that suggests that China can't innovate. I have to say that China has very rapid development now, and is emphasizing things like、uh, artificial intelligence, robotics. The advances in Jack's technological capacity have transformed how work is done on the factory floor. Liu Chantian is the leader of a production team. He has been on the job for five years. 刚开始来的时候不是全自动的，然后产能大概就是两三百个，啊，人很多，四五十个人，啊，每天做的就是很累。到现在是整条线就二十几个人，产能翻了三番。Innovation is not a challenge for China, but any developing country, especially where China arrived now, that is not anymore a labor cost, a low labor cost economy. The government needs to invest more in science and technology, in training, in education. Is the only way you can step forward in the innovation ladder. For Jack. The journey to intelligent manufacturing has just begun. It has its eye on the future, smart solutions, and the Internet of Things. It understands innovation will always be the engine of its success. Changsha, the capital of central China's Hunan province. Seems nondescript compared to major metropolises such as Beijing and Shanghai, but it is home to the country's third national supercomputing center and the crown jewel of the establishment is the Tianhe One, one of the fastest of supercomputers in the world. Huang Huang is a senior engineer at the center. He spends most of his day with supercomputers. 大家，然后穿下工作服，我们就上去。我叫黄黄，现在在国家超级计算长沙中心担任运维部副部长，然后主要从事的工作呢都是与超算息息相关的。那我们机器正常启动以后。这样一定要注意对积累下来的这些硬件的故障进行排除和检修，好吧？到时候我们要重点。Supercomputers are made up of tens of thousands of processors that can do billions or trillions of calculations per second. China's first supercomputer dates back to the 1980s, a milestone for the country, but nearly a decade after the very first supercomputer debuted in the U.S. The country had to play catch up and invested heavily in research and development. Decades of effort have paid off, and China is now a front runner in a global supercomputer race. We are the 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 And Huan also recognizes that the role of supercomputers goes far beyond the field of information technology. They serve as a powerful engine for the country's drive towards modernization. China's fast track to success in the supercomputing world did not come easy. Liu Chubo, an ordinary-looking man who rides his electric scooter to work every day. Is an important source of brain power for the National Supercomputing Center in Changsha. He had never touched a computer before the age of 18. While Liu Chubo was completing his PhD studies at Hunan University, he found the perfect platform 
to pursue his passion in computer science research. The National Supercomputing Center in Changsha offers a unique window into not only how China's innovative capacity has been built on talent development, but also the role information technology has played in the country's journey towards modernity. I think the, the story of China, which uh, can catch up uh, uh, the industrial revolution, not only industrial revolution, but the information revolution, digital revolution, and technology revolution, uh, in such a short span of time, you know, it probably uh, in 40, 50 years time that uh, has gone through the uh, developed countries 100 or 200 years time uh, to reach that stage. It's a miracle. A country that only began its modernization drive some seven decades ago. China could not afford to drag its feet in an era of digital transformation. Some experts call China's path comprehensive modernization. Other analysts have characterized China's fast-track journey to modernization as taking one giant stride to cover the distance which others have taken three steps to reach. Namely, China has completed the three industrial revolutions in an overlapping and short period. China became the world's top manufacturer in 2010, producing over 220 kinds of industrial products. China also grew from having no internet to becoming the world's second largest digital economy in less than 30 years. Just a three-hour drive from the tech hub in Changsha is Shanbei Village. Surrounded by forested hills, it is home to the Hua Yao people, a branch of the Yao ethnic group. Villager Feng Jaimei is an inheritor of the intangible cultural heritage of cross-stitching. The women in Shanbei are masters of this art, one of the first inscribed on China's National Intangible Cultural Heritage list in 2006. And with the help of targeted poverty alleviation policies, Shanbei village has also tapped into its potential for tourism, the terraces. Favorable policies have led companies to invest in a growth in tourist visits, which in turn have given Huayao cross-stitching more exposure. Having secured a complete victory in its fight against absolute poverty, China introduced a common prosperity strategy to continue to improve income inequality and social justice in 2021. The story of Feng and her fellow villagers is a microcosm of how these efforts have transformed lives. China did extraordinary achievements in terms of poverty alleviation for those who uh, were very poor. But now with common prosperity, there's a recognition, I think, that those levels of inequality are unacceptable for China now with common prosperity is across a broad range of areas is, is to address inequality. Inequality is not just about money. It is crucially about money, but it's not just about money.
We must say modernization does not equal to westernization. In the process of China's modernization, we have drawn from various achievements from the civilizations all over the world. But it is also rooted in Chinese tradition. For instance, there is an old saying in ancient China goes like, inequality rather than want is the cause of trouble. This is a thought made in 2000 years ago. However, it points to the social issue at the present time. So in my opinion, I think China's success will present a new model for human advancement. For policies to work, the village party secretary is a crucial part of this equation. Agriculture, more specifically the cultivation of the kiwi fruit, a traditional pillar of villages economy has also been transformed. Besides encouraging farmers to learn new agricultural skills, Shanbei village is also broaden people with the know-how. Shu Baosheng is one of them. He gave up a lucrative job in the city and returned to his hometown to start a kiwi farm. The average annual income of residents in Shanbei has increased more than eightfold in the past decade. Villagers say they have embarked on a new journey to prosperity. The importance of the Chinese way in terms of development is recognize that the most important uh, thing in the development is the people. Development is a concept that needs to be related not to politics, not to economic system, but to its people. If you don't improve the standard of living of the people, meaning if you don't give better education, better health, economic opportunities, training, doesn't make sense to have policies for development. Chinese authority and Chinese government, you know, attached more attention to common prosperity, to the distribution of the achievement of development. And it is very important to understand the China's modernization, people's oriented, you know, modernization. Now as to push for common prosperity and rural vitalization, an integral part of the country's modernization drive continues. The lives and communities of many more, like those in Shanbei Village, will be further transformed. Early morning sunlight breaks through the clouds and shines upon Erhai Lake in southwest China's Yunnan province. Zhao Deyu is ready for his daily routine of collecting seaweed and floating debris on the surface of Erhai, a kilometer away from his home. <laughs> Erhai Lake sits at about 2,000 meters above sea level and covers more than 250 square kilometers. The lake attracts tens of millions of tourists every year. But between 1996 and 2013, Erhai Lake saw three major outbreaks of toxic blue-green algae. 
The local government launched a series of campaigns, including abolishing cage aquaculture and motor fishing vessels, reclaiming fish ponds from the lake, returning housing to wetlands, and increasing the frequency of removing pollutants and water quality monitoring. The efforts have paid off. The water quality of Urhai is now suitable for domestic use. China's rapid economic development in past decades also generated environmental problems. The country soon realized that economic growth cannot come at the cost of the environment. China first proposed the concept of ecological civilization in 2007. The 18th National Congress of the CPC, convened in 2012, put the building of ecological civilization in a prominent position along with economic, political, cultural, and social development. Some 11,000 kilometers away from China, in South Africa, Professor Desta Membratu has been closely following China's environmental protection efforts. It is about developing an industrial economy that is in harmony with uh, the ecological uh, capacity that we have in our planet Earth. And in that regard, China has been at the forefront of uh, implementing the concept of circular economy at the national level by including uh, the issue of ecological civilization at the center of its uh, national development strategy. On the other side of Urhai Lake, another man has also been protecting the lake in a different way. In the early 2000s, a new outbreak of blue-green algae caught fishermen off guard. He Li Cheng gave up his fish pound too after the government issued new policies to protect the lake. With an adaptable and entrepreneurial mindset, He Li Cheng opened a guest house in 2014. But in 2017, all guest houses and restaurants in Urhai's core protection area were temporarily shut down. To get to the root cause, some 1,800 households around the lake were relocated. People retreated and the lake advanced. In 2020, He Li Cheng contracted nearly 40 hectares of land to participate in ecological farming. The local government has been working closely with China Agricultural University to facilitate technology transfer and promote ecological farming. Finding a balance between environmental protection and a practicing sustainable economic development is mankind's challenge. China has been working to solve this challenge. Beautiful is one of the six aspirational adjectives used to describe the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, the grand vision for the 100th anniversary of New China in 2049. China cannot claim to be beautiful if its air, water, and land remain polluted. Ecological civilization is to explain the relationship between human beings and nature, 
environmental protection and economic development, and the environment and people's well-being. The concept of ecological civilization has taken root in China in recent years. Spring whistles pierce the stillness of Mohan, a small town on China's border with Laos. It's another busy day as the first cargo train of the day enters China through the China-Laos Friendship Tunnel. The China-Laos Railway went into operation in December 2021. The electrified railway runs 1,035 kilometers, 40 percent of which are in Laos. It runs from Quanming, capital of southwest China's Yunnan province, to the Lao capital Vientiane. I'm a motorcycle driver, electric bicycle. 直产电力机车作业有二十多年左右。这边的货物基本上都是中国的特产拉到国外去，然后把国外的特产，比如水果、铁矿石这些拉到中国。During the first half of 2022, Laos exported a total of 250 million U.S. dollars of cassava, largely thanks to the China-Laos railway. That almost equaled the amount of the whole of 2021, making the commodity a top earner. Other products such as bananas, rubber, sugar, and coffee beans have also seen a significant increase in exports. Meanwhile, China's huge consumer market has also provided vast opportunities for Lao products. In 2021, bilateral trade soared over 21 percent from a year before. To more than 4.3 billion U.S. dollars, according to the Laos-China Cooperation Commission. การเห็นเวียงเนาะก็คือผ่านมานี้เห็นเวียงอยู่บริษัทมันจะมีแต่การขนส่งทางบกทางทะเลแล้วก็ทางอากาศนะแต่ว่าตอนนี้ฮันเมื่อรถไฟเข้ามาฮันก็สิมีเวียเกี่ยวกับการขนส่งทางรถไฟแบบนี้มันเขาก็จะมีทางเลือกเพิ่มเติมอีกเวียงหนึ่ง China's modernization is not a solo performance. It involves mutual development of its partners. The country chooses a peaceful path in proposing multiple cooperation frameworks, such as the Belt and Road Initiative and the Global Development Initiative. China's approach has been uh, to get a very close relationship and see what, how it can be a mutual uh, relationship, mutual a relation of mutuality, so both benefit. In Yunnan's capital Quanming, some 700 kilometers from Mohan, a Chinese company is also seeing the benefits of win-win cooperation. The Yuntianhua Group specializes in producing fertilizer, modern agricultural products, and fine chemicals. In the Yunnan Railway opening before the Yunnan Railway, 从昆明出口货物到泰国需要四百八十个小时左右，但是通过中老铁路的跨境运输，我们现在已经将时间缩短至五十八个小时，不仅减少了八成以上的运输时间，还减少了运输过程中的装卸、导短等环节。With the opening of the railroad, Laos has transformed from a landlocked country to a land-linked one. Its connectivity, not only with China but also the rest of Southeast Asia, has been significantly bolstered. ข้าพเจ้าเองมีความภาคภูมิใจต่อการห่มมือลาวจีนโดยเฉพาะแมนโครงการ
ทางรถไฟลาวจีนที่ได้สร้างสำเร็จเปิดน้ำใส้เป็นทางการเป็นต้นมาได้สร้างผลประโยชน์ให้แก่ประเทศลาวและประเทศจีน The China Lao's railway, built under the Belt and Road Initiative, is a tangible example of China's path of win-win cooperation and peaceful development. Chinese contribution is not limited to what needs to be done within China, but also in terms of influencing what should happen in other parts of the world, with particular focus in developing countries, including Africa, has been uh, quite. Uh, Instrumental in terms of creating the required capacity in the developing world. China has benefited enormously from foreign investment, especially since its reform and opening up began over 40 years ago. Now, as China has developed into a major economy, it's also investing heavily back into the world. China has also cooperated with various countries in numerous projects. The Piraeus port in Greece, the Mombasa-Nairobi railway in Kenya, the newly opened Palishas Bridge in Croatia, and the list goes on. One point four billion people on a journey towards modernization. I would describe it as one of the most remarkable, if not the most remarkable, stories in human history. More than seven decades ago, China started as one of the poorest nations and least developed economies in the world. And in this journey, they achieve things that no other civilization in the world has achieved. Striving against all odds, the Chinese charted their own path of development and transformation. This human is not possible. This is what we can't imagine. At that time, in the end of the world, we can't imagine that we can eat bread. No one thought that we can develop to this level. China is full of opportunities, so I very much want to go back and see it. I think. 这样是一个现在最好的先机，年轻人肯定能够成功。现在九月都直拍了，家里是个木房子，现在家里大搞这个大家房子。这海水这么清啊，大米买了，我们才会有可持续发展。那么一个“一带一路”的国门信息比较容易。During the process, China is becoming increasingly more interactive with the world. And playing a more active role in global development. They have an impact about the global impact towards the developments. They do a commendable job. Parece que já está no futuro, só que o futuro dele já é o presente, sabe? Ele já vive. With one fifth of the world's population embarking on a uniquely Chinese path to modernization, China has blazed a new trail for humanity. During the process of its modernization. China has vowed to share the benefits of development with the rest of the world. From now on, the Chinese Communist Party's main mission is to unite the whole country and the whole nation to build a modernization and socialist country, to achieve the second goal of the Millennium Fund, to advance the modernization of the Chinese Communist Party and the great achievement of the Chinese people. More stories of trial and triumph are yet to come as China continues on its journey of modernization for 1.4 billion. <laughs>